My name is Sasha Reed and I live in Bristol. Things were going not too bad, all right. Um, then I found out that my cousin had cancer. You might say because my cousin, but we're like twin brothers, very, very close. I found out that my ex-partner now was pregnant. So yeah, I told my family, told my cousin, he was really happy. And I remember him walking me to the door and like saying I've got something to live for now, something to fight for. <laughs> How many of your friends have been murdered? Three. Three of your very close friends murdered? Two of them are in jail doing life as well. You know what I mean? Two of them are in jail doing life. We've got one that's in and out of jail now. He's, he smokes and he's in and out of jail. He's struggling a little bit. And I obviously named the crew, do you know what I mean? But I'm trying to think of the day when I said, yeah, we're called Aggie Crew. You know what I mean? I can't even remember that day. It's just one day we was just called Aggie Crew and that's what we all represented, you know what I mean? My name's Maisie and I'm 14 years old. I live in Gloucester and I live with my mum and dad Claire and Brian and my younger brother Christopher and my younger sister Grace. Three dogs, a fish and a rabbit. <laughs> oh, Christopher, he's 11 years old and he has a syndrome called BBS, which is Bardot B. Dow syndrome. Right, I'll go first, it's time to do it. It affects his speech and language, um, his mobility, he has learning difficulties. We just try to let him experience as many things as possible so as he knows, you know, what a flower looks like and, you know, what a tree looks like. I feel like I've learned more strategies of what they use to try and calm their siblings down if they're angry or like deal with them better and how they deal with life and everything. I think I've kind of picked up on that, which is, re which is really nice. We all love Christopher the way he is and that's fine by us. Like we learn to deal with it. I think it's lovely how he is and it's just, I, 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 can't, I couldn't picture him any other way. But yeah, he's, it's lush. I, I wouldn't change it for the world. Around my late teens, I started suffering with uh, chronic constipation. I started going to the doctor, asking their advice. Nikki is now in her early 30s. She had the mesh and other procedures in 2010. She wants to be anonymous for personal reasons. Mr. Dixon was her surgeon. He said to me, I wouldn't want you dancing in my strip club. You have a ass of an 80 year old. Bearing in mind, I was 25, 26 years old. How did that make you feel? Um, very shocked. Uh, it was very rude and disgusted, but I felt that there was nowhere else to go. No one else could offer me what he was saying, that he could help me, and I'd suffered for so long. Her mesh became infected, so Mr. Dixon removed it. She sought reassurance it had all gone. At the consultation, Tony Dixon handed over Nikki's medical record, saying, here's the bloody notes. Nikki didn't have another mesh. Other doctors now say younger women shouldn't have mesh surgery straight away. They should be offered other therapies, including diet and training the pelvic floor.
Andy, we're here. Where are we? We're at the number one truck stop in the UK. Hey? Here in Chippenham, they're doing things slightly differently. All of the meat, the fruit and the veg is locally sourced. There's a free outdoor gym to get the blood pumping after a long drive. And somewhere to relax. 300 truckers visit every day. That means 1,200 breakfasts every week. This place has been chosen from 260 truck stops in the UK as number one. I remember my um, head teacher used to call me a superstar because on that time my English was very, very bad. The only thing I can say was okay and no, but now, you know, I can speak and... Hidden in the very center of Bristol, the sanctuary is a leafy oasis, which has been a real lifesaver, according to this single mother. Diane, not her real name, has suffered from mental health problems for most of her life. Very suicidal. I, I sort of nearly attempted it. I had tablets um, and I, I nearly took them. And at that point, I realized that I couldn't look after my daughter for the time being. And, I, and she, she had to go and live with her dad temporarily while I tried to get well. Well, it's probably a lot more anonymous than if you were to like go to your GP. It's not like people know it's here. There's something quite sort of safe and secure about that. Mm -hmm. 